this channel. You have to forgive me, I'm cutting these videos a little late in the week. Uh, I've come down with some kind of horrible Nurgle pox that is infested by face. And so it's kept me from getting at these videos, so I'm going to try and knock them out. I'm also going to try and do two of them extemporaneously. We'll see how that goes. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to the challenge. For now, though, we're going to start on our regular, uh, regularly scheduled broadcast. I pick up where we last left off. Primarchs are being discovered. And now, dear readers, dear viewers, we're going to get into it, the beginning of the end. So, the Ward Bears. Originally the Imperial Heralds of the 17th Legion and the Legion of Lorgar Aurelian. They're zealots, pure and simple, and from the moment they reunite with their Primarch, they begin worship of the Emperor as a living god. Keep in mind, up until this point, the Emperor is not cool with any of this. Uh, he goes out of his way to destroy all trappings of religion uh, on Old Earth. He doesn't want, he thinks religion is the reason that so many psychers came to power because they can manifest supernatural abilities and then pawn it off as, a, as godhood. He does not legitimately think that the Chaos Gods are actually gods. He understands them to be more for what they are, sentient warp storms, but at the same time recognizes that they have powers uh, equivalent to that of what we would primitively call uh, you know, gods and stuff like that. So, they make a good case for the Emperor being a god because, I mean, we're talking about a guy supercharged with chaos and can broadcast a psychic signal that can be detected for 50,000 light years around. That's a huge distance. I don't need to tell you guys who I'm sure are familiar with, with the concept of light years to know how powerful something like this would be. So it's not like they're being unreasonable, but it counters with the Imperial truth that's been promulgated throughout the galaxy and the Great Crusade up to this point. Uh, for about a century, the word bearers rendered human planets compliant. And what I mean by compliant is compliant with the Imperial Creed, acceptance of the rule of Terra, and the law of the Emperor. Uh, the word bearers ignore the worship parts and just go around making churches for the God Emperor mankind, disseminating uh, Lorgar's seminal work of the Lecticia Divinitatis, which ironically ends up being the uh, book about, around which the Church of the God Emperor is, is founded. It's used to the, uh, the uh, where the 40k is right now in the setting. So it's ironic that the uh, Church of the God Emperor is based on the work of the most heretical evil Primarch, the first one to fall to chaos. It's, uh, it's a little bit of uh, delicious irony. Anyway, this keeps happening for about, you know, for uh, about a century. Uh, then the planet Kerr, uh, which was made compliant at the beginning of the Word Bearers Crusade, uh, about 50 years, uh, about 50 years before Isvan 3, the Ultramarines show up. And they kick all the people out of the major cities, and they... Uh, decide to uh, nuke all of the cities from orbit. This blinds some people that are looking at them that are taken on as, as saints afterward, but we'll get to that. Um, they're allowed to send one distress signal before the annihilation of all their major population centers. They send it to the Ward Bears. The Ward Bears, led by Lurgar, in complete force show up to Kerr. This means a hundred thousand space moons. That was the Ward Bears uh, chapters. Uh, I'm sorry, Legion size at the time of uh, uh, the Great Crusade. They show up and they meet in the destroyed city of Monarchia. Uh, all that's left on the Ultramarine side is a single company with Malkador the Sigilite and R Big Bob himself, Reboot to Gelabin. Um Malkador tells Lagar he's got to calm down. Stop with the religion's nonsense. Lagar freaks out because he's like, you guys have known for a hundred years this is what I've been doing. I haven't kept a secret of it. Only now you deny the Emperor is a god. And Malgador is like, I don't care. You're a crazy person. You gotta cool out. So Lagar slaps him. Lagar slaps Malgador the Sigilite, the second most important man in the Imperium, the second most powerful psyker in the Imperium, and the last of the Illuminati, just slaps him like the dude owes him money. It's ridiculous. 
Malkador decides, okay, this isn't going to work. My whole thing is, is, is done. So he psychically tells the Emperor from orbit, hey man, he is not cooling out. The Emperor teleports down with some custodians, about 20 custodians. Uh, psychically commands all 100,000 word bearers to kneel in front of them. Yeah, so again, not really doing a great job of reinforcing the not a god thing by doing that. Uh, yeah, and, and incidentally, let me uh, take a quick uh, diversion here to say, how do you represent that on a tabletop? If they clearly, in uh, I don't know if any of you know this, but uh, in the Book seven, I believe, of the Horse Heresy, the actual 30k rule books, uh, the God Emperor of Mankind is listed as being a potential model that can be is is going to be used uh, interchangeable with Constantine Baldor. This might not have been book seven. This might have been a preview of uh, Book Eight, Angelus. But yeah, so they're planning on putting the God Emperor on the table at one point. What mastery level is uh, cause a hundred thousand Space Marines to do what you want? You got me. You got me. I don't know. So, uh, Emperor does that, tells them all they're a bunch of failures, and tells them to tool up. Lord Ron needs to comb his beard. Emperor's not a god. Get back to work. You gotta redo all this. You're the only Legion that's ever failed. Lord Ron doesn't take this well. No, no, he does not. He, uh, freaks out. He goes into mourning for like a month. Uh, covers himself in ashes. He's like, man, my life sucks. His two trusted lieutenants, uh, Erebus, uh, the chaplain, and Corferon, his adopted father, who was super old by the time the Emperor came to uh, Colchis, the Ward Bearer's home planet. But, so they couldn't make him into a space breed, but they did just the second best thing. They tooled him up with gene tech and special cybernetics, so he's functionally a space breed. He's got, term, he can wear Terminator armor, so whatever. Um, they tell uh, Lorgar, hey, we figured that the Emperor may not be a god, but we know about some gods. We remember the cool god that you ditched on Colchis to worship the Emperor, and those dudes... Those dudes aren't going to turn away your, your, your fealty. So why don't we go look for the place where gods can be made. They go on this thing called the pilgrimage. Another quick aside. We'll get into the legions one by one. If that's something you guys want to see as part of the Lore Bites video, I can do that. Um, but it's very clear that Colchis, the Lord, uh, Lord Planet of the Ward Bearers, has clearly been touched by chaos. Very... They're, the, the names of all the Chaos Gods are in their ancient lore, uh, and yeah, it seems like they were setting up for this one in a pretty heavy way. So, uh, for the next uh, year or so, they go on a pilgrimage to uh, the Eye of Terror. They send in a ship called Orpheus Lament with a small company of Marines. The Marines come out, uh, basically, uh, the first uh, possessed Marines, the Galverbach, they discover all kinds of stuff. And they're like, we know the gods, we know the truth behind everything. Corn, Zinch, Slanish, Nurgle. We gotta jump on this train if humanity is not to be annihilated by Xenos forces or all the other problems in the galaxy. And that's it. Lagar's done. 50 years before the. Uh, drop site massacre uh he is on the chaos train and everything goes downhill from this point forward i uh, hope you like the video this week uh that's we're gonna leave it off there and we'll pick up uh the more beginnings of heresy next round at sunday uh like and comment please share the video we're only three subscribers away at the time of filming this if we get three more people we'll be 300 subscribers that would just be huge so uh, do what you can. We really appreciate it. Uh, happy Wargaming. And as always, stay frosty.